Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to address one of the comments I get a lot in my videos and I also hear people talk about a lot when I go to meetups or conferences and that is which .NET version you should be using because we currently have two different types of versions well, really three, but we're going to talk about the two main ones which is LTS and current I'm going to explain what all that means but every time I show a new feature, let's say a .NET 7 feature, because .NET 7 will be current, people say, oh, this looks amazing, but I cannot use it because it won't be LTS, it will be current. And I don't think people fully understand what that means, and I think they're making a huge mistake. I've been lucky enough to have worked for some of the best companies here in London, in the UK, working with millions of customers, dealing with billions of dollars, even financial institutions, and we always moved to the current version because the benefit far outweighed any other concerns and i want to talk about that and explain why you might be using the wrong .NET version if you like the type of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com and speaking of nickchapsas.com i want to let you know that i just launched my summer sale for 2022 the first 100 of you who go to nickchapsas.com and buy an individual course using the discount code summer 2022 will get a 20 percent discount on any of the individual courses this does not cover the bundles just the courses so go in the description click the link use the code and happy learning okay so the goal of this video is to make sure that everyone who watches it until the end knows exactly what current and lts means and even preview and we're going to talk about that a little bit and to do that i'm going to use microsoft's official policy page on the matter so this is what the page looks like it's in the support policy in dotnet and dotnet core and it has been recently updated today it's the 28th of june and this has been updated 14 days ago from today so first let's make sure to understand what is covered by this policy in the first place so the sdk the runtime asp.net core which is the web stuff and entity framework core which actually for a long time i didn't know this was also covered yes all of them are covered by this support policy. I should point out at this point that this does not touch on any .NET framework, Mono, or any other stuff. This is just .NET and .NET Core. And then they explain how the life cycle of the projects work. Now, Microsoft used to have different life cycles, but they narrowed them down to what we're gonna see in a second, three years and 18 months, with ultimately the goal being that they want you to keep updating so they can keep innovating in the field. So the reason why they narrowed it down is so they can keep making dope stuff. Now let's talk about the main types of releases and you have two of them. You have long-term support or LTS releases and then current releases. And the way it works after .NET 5 is that if it is an even number, so 6, 8, 10 then that is a LTS release that has support for three years and if it is an odd number so 5, 7, 9, 11 then that is a current release and that has support for 18 months. Now what many people don't understand is that the level of support between current and LTS is actually the same. You're not getting a lesser type of support if you're in one or the other. LTS does not get premium updates and current doesn't get premium updates either they both get the same level of support so if you're worried about that don't be now let's see the supported version as of today so dotnet core 3.1 was the last lts that you can see it here and this is currently supported until the 13th of december of 2022 and it launched in december of 2019 so lts three years of support and you can see the latest patch version so even if it is 3.1 the latest patch version is 3.1.26 and this is important i'm gonna mention why later and you can see that this doesn't follow the old and even number thing i talked about this is because dotnet core was versioned differently with dot versions and don't worry about it after dotnet 5 which the dotnet core name was dropped this odd and even number approach came in effect and .NET 6 is the LTS and it's EOS or EOL so end of support or end of life is November of 2024 and the new version is coming every November now now as you can see there is no current version supported as I'm recording this video that's because .NET 5 became AOL because it's past the 18 months since its release and this actually happened if we scroll down all the way back in the 10th of May 2022 when this was out of support and when something is EOL or EOS or out of support then it doesn't receive any patches any support nothing you should not be using it basically run now there is actually a third type of release that people don't really talk about and that is preview releases so preview releases are a different life cycle that are usually rc versions and as you can see they also have a support 
period. Now, obviously, that support period is the day that the next RC is released. So RC1 was supported officially by Microsoft until the day RC2 came out. And then RC2 was supported officially by Microsoft until .NET 6 officially came out. So you can see that some preview versions are also supported. Now, this obviously does not mean that you should jump straight on them and move all your production code to them, but it's good to see that they're supported nonetheless. Now, I've already mentioned what we're going to see now, but I'm just going to make it very clear for everyone. So, .NET is being released every November. Now, when in November? We don't exactly know every time, but it's always in November. And every even number, as we talked about, is an LTS release, and it has the free support and patches for three years. And every odd number is a current release, and it has all the free support and the free patches for 18 months. And you can see here how different versions are being LTS and current. Then this release type section talks about stuff we talked about already. And then we have some support tracks. What I need to make very clear in these support tracks, by the way, is that LTS and current always covers the latest patch update, meaning that if the latest version over here is 6.0.6 .6 and you're in 6.0.5 and you haven't updated to the latest version, you are not covered by LTS and support. So you have to always be on the last patch if you want to be covered by Microsoft support. So keep that always in mind. Many people don't know this. Now, in terms of servicing, there's another thing that many people don't understand. These releases don't actually come out at any point. Microsoft has what they call patch Tuesdays, and that is the second Tuesday of each month. You can actually consistently see in the .NET blog when they announced this, that if I scroll, let me just make this a bit bigger for you. If I scroll all the way to the Tuesday, which should be the 14th, yeah, here you go. So this is a patch Tuesday post. It's about the release of the .NET 6.0.6 .6 version and the .NET Core 3.1.26 version. And you can see everything that they changed, it's user security, and they also announced that .NET 5 is also an end of support and you should move away from them. So every second Tuesday of each month, you should see a patch like that coming out. This is not guaranteed, by the way. It might be that they don't have enough stuff in a release to push on a patch Tuesday. So keep that in mind when you're searching to update your code. But if there's something security critical, they will most certainly have a patch for you. Now, another thing that people seem to completely miss in the whole equation is that servicing isn't actually treated equally between the whole duration of your LTS or your current. Even though LTS is 36 months and current is 18 months, you have two different types of support. You have full support and you have maintenance support. So during full support, you have everything you ever wanted in terms of uh, cap functional capabilities, improvement, security, you get everything you want. But on the last six months of both LTS and current, not just current, you only get security vulnerability fixes. Nothing else, no improvements, no features, no nothing. So keep that in mind. And then, of course, in the end of the period, you have an end of support or end of life where Microsoft no longer supports basically anything and you have to move. Now, why am I making all this super clear? Well, it's because many people think that every odd number, so 7, 5 or 9, is the .NET release, which is more of a beta release and you shouldn't properly use in production. In some cases, actually, your managers say, no, we cannot use this because it's not LTS. First and foremost, LTS that is three years is very, very short to begin with, LTS for other companies or historically and other things is way longer. But in my opinion, you should not sleep on current releases. You should always migrate when the new release is out and you should make a case to make some time in your sprint to migrate. And that is for two reasons. First, you're getting huge performance benefits and features when you move to a new release. And migration is almost always painless. Many people complain about having to migrate, but in my experience, other than .NET Core 1.1 to .NET Core 2.0, which even that didn't take that long, I never had a painful migration experience or I never had an issue with stuff breaking. And I've always migrated to current and LTS when they came out. And remember, I used to work with microservices, so we would migrate 30, 50 services. Now, Microsoft creates excellent migration pages with basically everything you would ever want to know about how to migrate your code from the previous version to the new one. So 5 to 6 is here, 3.1, even the code 
to 6 is here, so you will see changes on the individual components. If I scroll all the way down, it explain everything you ever wanted, 3.1 LTS to 6.0 LTS, if you really want to just touch the LTSs, and these pages are not long. This is an LTS to LTS release, and even with this huge font, it is not big. So if the argument against it is migration, in my opinion, it's a non-argument, because the benefit and the features and what you can do with this new release is tremendous. I remember every time we would migrate to a new version, the CPU and the memory would go down, and we would get all the credit for doing that, because now we can run more containers in our Kubernetes cluster with the exact same setup of memory and CPU backing it up, and we would always take the credit for it. Also, if you wait basically for two versions to migrate, then you have to follow two migration guides, which is always lengthier and always riskier. It's way less risky for your code to migrate from an LTS to current and then from current to LTS because you have less stuff to change and you're more up to date. And on the original argument that people think that the old number releases are more of a beta release where they're testing out new features, well, 3.1 had major changes on it and they kind of fixed them with .NET 5, which was a current release, and then .NET 6 changed the whole structure of the application, removing startup, adding minimal APIs, adding a bunch of stuff, and minimal APIs were actually lacking features on release, and they're adding them in .NET 7. So it seems like current is the actual version where they implement stuff properly, and LTS is when you're getting the beta features, in a sense. But I want to pass the question up to you. What do you think? Are you always going on current and then LTS when it's coming out? Or you have to strictly stick with LTS no matter what? Leave your comments down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe more. Click the like button and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.